There was a book on the side of the road. Did someone leave it behind? I picked it up and flipped through the pages. It looked to be some sort of diary. The book started on the day the owner of the diary visited another world. He claimed he was searching for a voice. I glanced at the last page. It said that the owner looked up at the sky. Then he looked at reality off in the distance and thought the following. Please, let the story be told to whoever's next. Myth is a short story. I would wager that even slow readers could probably finish it in less than 20 hours. It is a large cast, too large, in fact, for its own good, and leaves many plot threads and ideas dangling without resolution. But since finishing the story, those characters, and particularly the way that the story ends, have haunted me, pervading my thoughts endlessly. Myth is a lot of things. It clearly derives a lot of influence from the works of Uchikoshi and Ryukishi, taking a similar abstract sort of approach to mystery and meta-narrative. But to simply leave it at that isn't doing it justice. I've thought a lot about how to describe myth. It's Ever-17 meets Umineko. It's a fantasy, horror, mystery, crime thriller. But none of those things really strike at the heart of what the story is and offers. Because yes, myth is a mystery. Myth is a horror. But more than any of that, myth is a story about stories. It's about fiction, prose, words, and why we use them. And while not exactly a coherent story, and certainly far from the best I've ever read, there's nothing at all like it that you'll ever see anywhere else. Existentialism is a school of thought that suggests that there is no meaning inherent to anything. It goes hand in hand with nihilism and putting forward the idea that there are no final answers to find in this world. No truth with a capital T. An existential crisis, therefore, is a profound fear in questioning the point of living under the realization that there is no objective point to find. It's the crushing weight of choice. But you see, existentialism is not dour as it is liberating. It doesn't simply stop at saying that there is no meaning but that since there is no meaning, we can create meaning for ourselves. The suffering derived from an existential crisis roots not from the lack of meaning, but the lack of one true meaning, because choice is difficult and ambiguous. You fall under the smothering weight of freedom. While not nearly as successful in the mainstream as its sister work, Munako no Nakukuroni is still widely loved among readers of visual novels. There are many things one could appreciate within the narrative, a lot of which I was never personally able to resonate with. And that's because of how the most interesting thing about the story invalidates the rest of it. Umineko is divided into two parts. The first half is a gripping logistical mystery wrapped around a personal character drama. It puts the protagonist battler into mind-breaking bouts of logic with the golden witch Beatrice, all in defense of his family and their innocence. It's thrilling, it's heartfelt, and it's a lie. When the answer arcs of Umineko start to unwind their narrative, we learn that the story is not about the mystery, it's not about the debates, the logic. Battler isn't even the real protagonist. Rather, it's a story about a sad girl named Angie, trying her best to live in a world where everything she ever loved was hoisted from her in a single week. And perhaps most interestingly, it's a story about fiction and the dubious nature of truth. We learn that the entirety of the question arcs, the first portion of the game we were so invested in, were nothing more than a lie. Every single story of Battler facing off against the Endless Witch, warping the rules of the world to save Rokinjima from tragedy was just that. A story. What Umineko is really about is Angie living terrorized by a world where popular fiction is constantly defacing the memories she has of her now deceased family. No one knows what happened on Rokinjima, but we do know that Battler didn't save the day. Whatever Angie thought she knew about these people was nothing more than a convenient lie, because the truth of the matter is that 17 people left for that island, and only a single person returned alive. But of course, that's not really the point of the story. What you see, what you feel, that is and will always be an irrefutable version of the truth. There is no story that could be written by anyone that could ever invalidate Angie's happy memories. And in the end, Angie chooses to believe her own fiction. Because no one can really know what happened that day. The truth cannot be found. And even if it could, it wouldn't help or change anything anymore. So Angie picks her own, embracing the future instead. In Umineko, you don't get all the answers. Surely there are answers, but the whole point of the narrative is that those answers quite simply don't matter. So why did we even read it then? Simply put, it's the same reason that Angie rejects probability and embraces the golden truth. It's because a story let us believe. In the end, the player is presented with a choice. Bad Trice performs a simple magic trick, but even calling it that is giving it too much credit. She has you close your eyes, and when you open them, a single piece of candy that she was holding has now doubled. The final test that the story presents you, 
a question that strikes at the core of what Umineko is, is simply, how did this happen? Was this magic or a trick? Do you believe in the conclusion that makes the most sense, or the one that is the most wonderful? Have faith in the answer you choose, because it is the answer that you have chosen. Myth is quite literally a story. It's revealed that everything you're seeing is taking place within a simulation. The people you've been interacting with aren't people, they're just lines of code, and you, the player, don't even exist. For most of the story, you and the other characters spend the narrative trying to find a way to escape the narrative. You try and find a way out of the simulation that is myth and back into the real world. You're following a script, but the nature of the story you're in doesn't matter to you, only the pursual of the genuine. Why does myth exist? Are we working towards that purpose? Those questions don't really matter to the main characters. Nothing matters more than the manic search for answers. But for the characters, there's nothing gained from getting those answers. There's nothing left to gain at all. The final acts of the story reveal that the whole world is destroyed. Humanity is dead, and all that's left is a story. A story written in desperation to try and chronicle who was here, and what they may have been like. Much like Umineko, myth switches the script on its characters. The questions that they abandoned, why does this story exist? Why are we participating in it? Those are the questions that ultimately mean the most, while things like who did it, why, what's real, and how do I get out of here, simply don't. And in the end, a lot of those things simply go without answer. But the answers that you do get speak volumes to why we read, take in information, and engage in media at all. You never learn who the author was, but you learn why they wrote the story, that something might remain of who humanity was after they were all gone. And perhaps even more important than that, you learn how they felt. You learn that leaving behind this record let them die in peace. Everyone died. No one got a happy ending. So why not indulge yourself a bit? Why fight a narrative that is trying to let you, even if it's just an afterimage of you, have that sort of normal life you wanted? Myth ends with the characters not breaking free and carving their own destiny, but accepting that they don't need to let themselves be consumed by that awful truth that the world is destroyed. Because in the end, this story is still here. Within the program, casing them in, they can still try and believe. The world is not simple. There are no easy answers or convenient truths. Struggling to put the world into boxes is a large and unrelenting task. And the more you think you understand, the less you actually have to believe in. Neither of these stories exist to discredit truth. Gravity compels objects with mass to one another. Transactions and matter and energy are always balanced. What it does say is that there is no easy emotional fact. Angie's parents loved her. They also quite likely killed many people. Those statements are opposed, but not incongruous. Her family was not good or bad. They simply were. You can believe that whatever happened on that island makes them nothing more than a bunch of greedy devils. Or you can remember the warmth of their embrace, the pride they had in you. No one of those answers is more correct than the other. Similarly, why do we engage in media? Fiction is fake. No amount of reading can stop time or make the world around you any less unrelenting. But through reading, we can learn things. We see lives that we can't live ourselves, ideas we might not have ever considered. We think and we change. And at the end of the day, those answers are just as real as anything you see out there in the real world. For lack of an answer, for lack of a truth, fiction lets us believe. <laughs>